Once I was uh, <clears throat> in London in 1969, Prabhupada came there, and uh, one of the ladies, Mukunda's wife, when we were having a darshan, maybe the, he came in the evening, so it was the next day, and all the devotees were there to be with Prabhupada. And, and of course, the, the three householder couples had been sent by Prabhupada, so there was a lot of feeling and they had some success because they had attracted the Beatles and George Harrison and so on. So, uh, Mukunda's wife, Janaki, said, and then, uh, you know how a woman can speak with emotion, and she said, Prabhupada said, you're so wonderful, you want to save the whole world. Yeah. And, and everybody was kind of quiet, and we all looked at Prabhupada and how he was going to respond to this kind of emotional outburst. And Prabhupada became sober, and he said, he said, yes but this is Maya's kingdom. <laughs> it's very difficult. So this is what Krishna is saying here. Duratyaya, very difficult. Uh, how do we overcome it? We have to be very sober. Dira, dira tatya namoriti. Otherwise, we'll identify with the mind and body as ourself. <clears throat> Since time immemorial, we've been gripped by this Maya. Uh, so it's not an easy thing. We have to take it very seriously. If we're frivolous, then we'll miss it. Uh, <clears throat> and another time in, in uh, Mayapur, Prabhupada was, was having darshan and he was speaking something about Krishna, which was very enlivening. And, uh, and then a Bengali couple came in, young couple, maybe 25, 30. So Prabhupada stopped speaking and kind of, you know, offered them a place to sit kind of with his hand and they sat down and then Prabhupada resumed speaking. Maybe in about 15 or 20 seconds they stood up and wanted to go out and went out again. Mm. And I remember I was sitting I said, these people are so stupid, why are they? That was mm. my thought, you know. Mm. <laughs> and then, but Prabhupada also, he said, just see, the problem is that they're not dira, they're not sober. Yeah. They won't sit and hear philosophy, even for five minutes. Oh, I should go and do something. <laughs> <You know. clears throat> But this is the qualification. We have to hear. Prabhupada said that was my my qualification. Others were coming and going, but my spiritual master noted that this boy likes to hear. So that's why Prabhupada emphasized this book distribution, book publication, book translation. Because uh, uh, by reading, we're also hearing. Of course, the, the spoken word is in some ways more potent, you can say. Uh, Sabda Brahman, the sound. The sound, when sometimes Prabhupada spoke with such authority, you could, you could just sense, you could you know, understand that he wasn't speaking from a mental platform, intellectual platform. He was just speaking directly from the soul. I remember once uh, we were in Los Angeles. I was a sannyasi early, so I used to get to be, you know, I took sannyasi in 71. So Prabhupada, when he was going on a walk or ride or something, I could always kind of get in, you know, I could pull rank and say, <laughs> And I remember once we were in the car, right? Uh, mm, Prabhupada was uh, in the front, I think, yeah. And uh, three of us were in the back, Ramachandra maybe, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> we came a different way in the alley, and the devotees didn't see us. And they were mostly in the street, and they were chanting and so on. And, and Prabhupada saw, it, saw the devotees, you know, and how enthusiastic they were. And he suddenly spoke with from real, 100% authority, he said, they cannot check this movement. They mm. cannot check this movement, he said. Mm. It will go on unchecked for 10,000 years. Uh, <clears throat> so when he spoke like that, you know, it was just, it wasn't an intellectual thing. It was just, it went right into your heart and you could understand it. This, this person is not bluffing, you know, he's not a fool. He's not making something up. And similarly with Krishna, when Krishna speaks throughout Bhagavad Gita, that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that this is his Maya, uh, but still the Mayavadis come and say, oh, it's not Krishna we have to surrender. Uh, we have to surrender to the unborn within us or something. Isn't it? Have you yeah. experienced these yeah. rascal Mayavadis? Yeah, yeah they, wanted, they, they, they want Bhagavad Gita without Krishna. Uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada, I saw it, that he was most disturbed because of that. Mm. that uh, therefore he read, Bhagavad, he made Bhagavad Gita as it is. And in the introduction he says, how people have spoiled the Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> uh, 
So we have to present it like that. That's our only qualification. Prabhupada used to say, that was my qualification. I gave it as it was. So we can also have that qualification. I remember once, another time in London, uh, the little temple in Bury Place, Prabhupada was giving Bhagavad Gita class in the evening. It was in the winter like this. And uh, he was there from September to three months, September, October, November, like that, until the middle of December, middle of September, middle of December. And uh, <clears throat> he, so every, often he would have class at night. We were, we would come and, and uh, I remember one evening he was saying how, how the spiritual master is the representative of Krishna. And he was just uh, sitting, you know, maybe from, from where that poster is now. Mm. Or even, I was even closer, because it was a small temple room. And uh, suddenly, it's like, when he said that, I got like a mystic experience that he wasn't an ordinary person, that he was really uh, representing Krishna. He was like Krishna's you know, shakshadari right there in front of us. And uh, it's, you know, it made a big impression on me. So the next morning I was going to give massage. I had the service of giving Sri Prabhupada massage. Uh, and... Uh, when I came in, you know, of course I paid my bass and season. And I said, Prabhupada, I very much liked your class last night. And he said, oh, what part did you like? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I said, uh, the part where you said that you were the representative of Krishna. <laughs> and Prabhupada said, he, he liked that. He, he liked that. You know, sometimes I would flatter him, he wouldn't like it. <laughs> I'll tell you another story about yes, that. But this he liked. He, he, he accepted it. It's the fact. And he, he turned it around like he always did. And he was expert at, at encouraging us. And so he said immediately, he accepted it. <coughs> then he said, and you also can be representative of Krishna. Uh -huh. <laughs> when you say, Krishna said, or Prabhupada said, he used his own name. <laughs> then you can also... So it's open to everyone. That's the idea. It's not like an exclusive priestly class. I met Prabhupada, therefore I, I, you also can't have the same realization or the same advancement as me. No. It's open to everyone. Just have to repeat. That's why we, we're so upset when, when they twist it. Hmm. Why can't we repeat what Krishna is saying? Man mana bhava, mad bhakti, become my devotee, bow down to me, off you. Why do they want to twist something? That me doesn't mean me. They say like that. <coughs> Mm -hmm. This I and me is not actually what Krishna is me. <clears throat> Prabhupada used to give the example like, if I say, bring me a glass of water, and you say, okay, you drink the water, and say, well, it's, uh, don't you mean the me within me? <laughs> no, it's like a joke. But they're serious about twisting Krishna's word. Especially you, in the Indian community, you have to be very convinced about this. Yeah. Because there's so many of them. They're contaminated to some degree, practically every Hindu, <laughs> except those who have become strong in ISKCON. They, because of Sankaracharya and the whole tradition, they're all somehow affected some way by this Mayavadi philosophy. And this would disturb Prabhupada. Another time I remember in, La, in Japan, <clears throat> I was there with Prabhupada sometime off he came, and there was a program at a in Osaka, another city outside of Tokyo. And it was an Indian man who had arranged the program. And he had a guru, so his guru was also on the, on the uh, stage. Oh. So first the devotees came, you know, they did kirtan, and uh, <clears throat> then Prabhupada spoke. And then this guy's guru was, was, speak, was going to speak. But he spoke in Hindi, so we couldn't follow. <laughs> so in the middle of his speech, Prabhupada said, Stop him. <laughs> you know, there's 300 people in the audience, and, and Prabhupada said, stop him. <laughs> so, you know, we stood up, and, and then Prabhupada said, make a kirtan. So we didn't, you know, we, yeah, so we just, then we had a loud kirtan, and the guy had to stop talking. <laughs> so he, went, he, he said, then afterwards he told us, he said, I could not tolerate. He was minimizing Krishna. Yeah. He was saying that there's five that you have to worship. Some, what is it? Panchabuddhas. Panchabuddhas. Panchamahabuddhas. 